This a brief video is a guide to selecting the best shoes for your child. The recommendations are based on science and not on anything that is commercial. Be aware that the best uh, uh, feet are in those who go barefooted. We visited the hill tribe in Thailand and saw individuals who had gone barefooted their whole life. And they had healthy feet, rarely deformed, they were flexible, strong, and pain-free. They had thick plantar sole skin, and the problems were due primarily to injury. And these findings were the same as other researchers in many other continents. So the barefoot people have the best feet. But bare, going barefooted is seldom practical in most places in the world. And so shoes like clothes need to be comfortable and acceptable in appearance. And they need to protect the foot from cold and injury. The free movement of the barefoot, however, provides us a guide for selection of the best shoes in children. And the recommendations that I'm giving on shoes are summarized in this review article in the journal Pediatrics, which is the official journal American Academy of Pediatrics, uh, and uh, a special article entitled Shoes for Children in a Review. And the first principle is that shoes should be flexible. The shoe should be easily bent in the hand between the fingers because stiff shoes limit movement and may weaken the muscles of the foot and ankle. The second principle is to provide level walking surface. Shoes should be flat. Avoid high heels greater than one inch in height because high heels make the foot unstable and increase the pressure on the toes. The third principle is that the shoe should be shaped like your child's foot. Have the child stand and the shoe should look like it. And there should be a round toe box, should not be pointed and it should be adequate in size. The next principle is the sole friction should be like that of skin. It shouldn't be excessively sticky or slippery. These increase the risk of your child falling. The fifth principle is it should be adequate in size. It should be about a finger breadth from the end of the toe to the end of the shoe. And remember that the child early in life grows faster, so the shoes will have to be changed more frequently. And particularly avoid shoes that are too small because they cramp the foot. It's better to be too large than too small. The sixth principle is the shoes should be acceptable in appearance because kids are very sensitive about the look of their shoes. And allow the child to select from the shoe from those shoes that meet the criteria that we presented. Other desirable features of shoes include the construction using mat breathable material, especially in hot weather, uh, lightweight, as this requires less energy for play. They should be cushioned soles if the child's playing on hard surfaces, and they should be uh, affordable. For parents, they need not be expensive if the criteria are met. And one should avoid the so-called corrective shoe inserts or odd shapes because these modified shoes and arch supports do not correct anything or deformity. They're often expensive, uncomfortable for the child, and sometimes are embarrassing for the child to wear. Then also avoid these kinds of odd shapes. So in summary, the barefooted people have the best feet. So this is a guide. And the best shoes for children then are those that simulate going barefooted as much as possible. But shoes are necessary to protect the foot and provide uh, uh, cosmesis or, or appearance or like other clothing. And select shoes you would other clothing items. Shoes should be acceptable in cost for the parents and appearance for the child. Avoid the so-called corrective shoes or those that are odd shaped. For free printable downloaded material covered in this presentation, go to our website at www.globalhelp.org and bring up what parents should know. You can click on this and download in a PDF format and then print it as you wish at your leisure. 
Thank you for watching this video and please send me any comments at staley at uw.edu. Thank you.